Okay, good, good evening everybody. We're gonna call the meeting to order. Our meeting, our committee of the whole meeting of September 28th, 2021. Warden? Yes, I just want to say that uh, this is our first inaugural meeting in our new building, and this is the first net zero energy building or administrative building in Canada. So we're very proud of our, of our uh, project and proud of uh, what we've accomplished in this. Thank you, Warden. So if everybody has had the chance to look at the agenda, I would like to, are there any additions or omissions to the agenda? Yes. Councillor Digby. Oh, thank you very much. I'm just getting on to some of this new uh, technology. fandangle technology we have here. Uh, okay, I'd like to add the shift house to the agenda and as well as maybe a letter of support to the town of Yarmouth for the application for the wheelers being able to go into the town. Okay, where would you like to add that, Councillor Digden? Wherever you would like to put it. Okay, Deputy so Warden. Shift House would go under for, for decision, so we would put that under 7H and 7I, letter of support. Thank you very much. Okay, anyone else? Councillor Surratt. So move uh, to move the agenda. As amended. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Okay. I'll second that. Seconded by Councillor Donaldson. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded, nay. Motion carried. We don't have any presentations. To, oh, before I go to presentations, are there any conflicts of interest? Anybody have a, con a declaration of conflict of interest? And remember, you can declare your conflict on the item as we're going through. So if something comes up, you can let us know at that time. Okay, moving on. Number three, we do not have a presentation tonight. We're going to look at item number four, adoption of minutes. So 4A, we have the regular council meeting minutes of Tuesday, September 14th, 2021. Somebody willing to move those minutes? So moved. Thank you, Councillor Dontremel. Do we have a seconder? I'll second that. Thank you, Councillor Digden. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. <laughs> Motion carried. Uh, me meeting minutes of the Planning Advisory Commission minutes, July 15, 2021. Somebody willing to move those minutes? So move. Thank you, Councillor Surratt. Seconder? Second. Thank you, Ward News. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary? Motion carried. Uh, for C, PAC minutes for September 14th, 2021. Anybody willing to move those minutes? Slow move. Thank you, Councillor Bork, seconded. I'll second that. Thank you, Councillor Digden. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion carried. Number five, we have business arising from the minutes. I don't see any business arising from the minutes on the agenda for this evening. So we'll move to number six, financial statements for August 2021. So I will give that over to CAO Muse. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, as, as normal, uh, in the month of August, we, we only show a very high level uh, financials. This is your, the first financial statement uh, that you will have seen this fiscal, I'm quite sure, perhaps the second. Actually, I think it's the second. Okay, um, be that as it may. Right now, we are estimating an operating fund surplus of 157,980. That is taking into account the, um, that is the, the operating surplus that belongs to the municipality. The, there are other surpluses in West Pubnico Sewer, Tuscott Sewer, uh, Middle West Pubnico Utility, and Wedgeport Sewer. So, so those surpluses are not included in that number. So uh, 157,980 is what we're seeing now for a surplus. Um, again, early days, but I would say that uh, the driving force of that is, um, the transfer tax. Um, I hate to say, uh, hate to say it, but we're we're getting actually quite lousy at predicting uh, the transfer taxes. Uh, we used to be so-so. Uh, now we're really lousy. So obviously, you as you know, uh, all joking aside, uh, you know, there's been a lot of transactions and there's been a lot of of um, sales, and the market has really shifted uh, uh, in the pandemic. Um, so we're we're budgeting uh, probably the the best year. Uh, ever for detransfer tax, which uh, takes a lot of pressure off of the the regular 
taxation revenues. Um, so uh, I will say that this budget does not include any contemplation of recent announcements of, uh, from the, the new provincial government around equalization grants. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, there was a commitment from the new government to double the uh, equalization grant. So this does not contemplate that increase. I don't know exactly when that will come in, and, 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 uh, but my expectation is it could impact this year's fiscal, okay? So it's not included here. And just so that you know, um, the, we get approximately, I, I don't have it right in front of me, but about $154,000 in equalization grants. So, so if it's a pure doubling, you can do the math, um, it's an additional 150. Mm -hmm. How that works, whether it's prorated, uh, we don't have that information right now. So um, that will be another unexpected piece of good news. Uh, most of the revenues that you see that are behind schedule are um, uh, revenues related to a municipal in innovation plan for regional planning. Uh, as you know, you would have approved a multi-municipal investment in creating a regional planning solution for Yarmouth, Digby, and Shelburne counties. Not all the municipalities participated, but that is flowing through the municipality of Argos financials. So uh, the revenue and the expenses, once they start to roll, you'll start to see those numbers uh, change. So you'll see a, a, that it looks like our revenues are down, but there's an equal amount of expenses that is also down because the money hasn't been spent. So it's, it's what we call a conditional grant. You, you, get, you show the grant as money, as revenue, when you earn it, when you spend it. Okay, um, so the, the equalization grant that I described earlier is an unconditional grant. So if we get it, it will be shown as revenue at that time because there's no conditions attached to that fund. Um, the other thing that we have not uh, received word on yet is any increase in policing costs. We are aware that there has been a contract negotiation that has been settled from, uh, and this would be at the RCMP national provincial level, we don't know what that fiscal impact is on us yet, and that might be a negative on your income, st on your uh, financials uh, this year. Uh, it could impact this year's operations. So what we budgeted was what they told us the expense would be, and they did not know uh, what the result of that negotiation would be at the time the budget was set. So that's a negative that could, that is not here that could impact your statements this year. Um, so other than that, that's the extent of the revenues, uh, the, the revenue side of things. I'll say that the expenses, um, uh, it's, it's a little early days still. Um, we do have about 42,000 in savings so far in general government services, and that's spread across all sorts of different um, um, areas. Um, the other larger amount would be um, under sewage collection disposal for West Pubnico and Tuscott. As I'd mentioned before, the surplus that that surplus is is not in that number isn't included in that 157 that I referred to earlier. Mm -hmm. So th those expenses are coming in a little slower than expected, but we are expecting that to ramp up a little bit, and we're expecting that the, the um, uh, that the financials for West Pumnico and Tuscott will come very close to budget. It just hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, the other thing I would say, other uh, note I would uh, share is that uh, planning and zoning, uh, you'll see that there's a savings there of 33. That's in reference to the, the municipal innovation program. We haven't spent the money yet. Uh, all the other expenses related to planning and zoning are, are within expectations. And we're seeing recreation is a little slower on the expense side. We anticipated uh, to be further along on the Glenwood Park improvements. Um, so some of that is, uh, is factoring in. We still plan on spending the money, but we're being delayed by some studies that have to be done before we do that investment. And if you recall, that investment included two major improvements. One is beach volleyball, and the second is a floating dock, um, both of which will have accessible accessibility features included. So that would be the end of my uh, brief, I guess, financial report. And if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Are there any questions for CAO Muse? Uh, Councillor Surratt. A few questions, uh, Mr. CAO. Uh, so that money you, that's coming from the uh, equalization, unconditional? So that means there's, if you, I think you explained that, that means we can spend it, but it would be 
on the Argyle Park or whatever, or Lenwood Park, I should say, uh, whatever, right? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, that is correct. Um, now, of course, you can impose your own conditions on that money. Okay. So, so when I say unconditional, I mean the, the, that the, the province is not setting any conditions on this money. Yeah. But for instance, if this council wished to use that money for a particular purpose, you could create your own conditions on it. Right. So, so if you had that extra, you're like, okay, you really would like to invest it in this, um, you can absolutely do that as a council. Madam Chair, if I may, I had a couple more questions. Uh, I see uh, the provincial transfer and our own reserves on the revenue side. We got 31,000 provincial transfer that we're down, if you look at the revenue. So uh, that is that timing? Through you, Madam Chair, that is, um, that is, that is almost entirely the municipal innovation uh, okay. revenue piece. So that's where it's, it's kind of buried in that number. So, so we, haven't, it, we have the money, we just haven't spent it yet, so we can't show it as revenue yet. Very good, great. And finally, uh, the province is looking, might be a, a question that should maybe ask a little later, but they're in negotiating uh, the agreements with the, with the provinces. Have you heard anything at all that they're gonna come and uh, meet the CAOs, or I don't know if you've heard of that? that the new government was gonna kind of re, uh, rearrange the, or hasn't look, looked at since 1995, I believe it was. So uh, have you heard anything on that, or that might be down the line, do you think? Or it might mean more money for us, or maybe not? Uh, through you, I, that's an excellent question. And yeah. so we, what we know is that the minister has been provided a mandate from the premier and one of the mandates of our new Minister of Municipal Affairs is to look at um, the existing memorandum of understanding or agreement that, the, municip that the, uh, the municipalities have signed with the province. So I don't know exactly what that means, but what, what I'm interpreting is that uh, the work that was done back in the late 90s, which some, some of you might remember, uh, included shifting certain responsibilities to the province and having the municipality take on uh, responsibilities. So um, I think it's gonna be a similar conversation where they're gonna look at everything that is being paid for by A or, or, or delivered by A or B and, and kind of take a, a holistic look at all of it. That doesn't mean more money for, for uh, municipalities, it may. Um, how will it impact this municipality? Hard to say. Um, like for instance, one of the things is, is that e doubling of the equalization grant. So there's eight municipalities that don't receive an equalization grant. So as you know, zero times two is still zero. So, <laughs> so it doesn't, so my point is it's, it impacts certain municipalities greatly and it impacts some not at all. So I don't know in terms of where that's headed yet. It's early still. I know that um, it's likely that the province will will probably will come up with certain ideas and then consult with municipalities nsfm ama um they, they'll do a consultation it i'm not what i'm hearing is we're unlikely to be part of that we'll we'll be likely um giving them feedback on the work that they've done so early days still but but the province has i think six months to come up with some pretty significant changes so it's aggressive um, so it could involve uh, us in a very significant way. That was a long answer, I apologize, but it's it a good question. I'm glad you had something on. Yeah. Councillor Donaldson? Yes, this may not be a fair question because uh, there's nobody here from the taxation department, but I'm looking at the very first law in uh, residential taxes. Is it normal to only have like two-fifths of our taxes collected at this stage of the year? Uh, so through you, um, basically how we, we pre prepare that is we, the way that we present this is that we prorate the budget and we prorate the actual. So what happens is this isn't necessarily how quickly we're collecting it. Okay. The collection um, is, is, is on par with, with what it was last year, I will say that. We're not, we don't see any concerns on collection, um, but uh, how we show the revenue because whether we collect it or not, we earn it. 
and so um, and so we're showing it uh, basically to prorate from from March one to August or sorry April one to August thirty one at this time. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, thank you, Councillor Dontremel. Uh, on the revenue side, uh, looking at the sale of services, uh, sale of wind energy, and I'm always interested in green power. So uh, I see we were budgeted at eighty four. 500 and uh, the budget for the, till the end of this of August is 35208 and the actual is 35208 so how does that all work I guess because I don't think the wind uh, you know flows exactly <laughs> on budget does it <laughs> I love that question uh, so what we typically do is uh, so first of all the municipality of the district of Yarmouth is is the is the bookkeeper for this revenue so the revenue is shared amongst the three of us. They do the bookkeeping. We don't generally get, we get two payments. So we typically don't have a payment at this okay. time. So, but we know it's consistent. It's not exact as to your point. But so what we do is we prorate the revenue to our best guess at this point until we get our first payment. And then when we get that first payment, we predict what we think the rest of the year will look like. But you're right, it does not blow exactly the same as budget. <laughs> Um, and so just to remind the group, this is, this is sale of wind energy for the two turbines that we have in Wellington. So we have all sorts of different ways that we generate wind revenue. Um, this one is directly selling the wind to Nova Scotia Power through a CONFIT program. We also have above that a couple of lines that talk about um, special tax agreements and wind turbine legislation. That that relates to wind turbines that are owned by somebody else, but that are installed in our municipality, that we, we have a taxation revenue. So one is the sale of energy, the other one is a taxation revenue. That's the difference. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, Would, do we need a motion for that, um, CEO Muse? Motion to accept is. Okay, can we have somebody make a motion to accept the financial statement as presented? I'll make the motion. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor uh, Donaldson. Yes. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Mo uh, contrary? Motion carried. Thank you. So we'll move to, for decision, number seven, 7A, seven Article C44, Allergy Accommodation Policy. So we've been given notice on this policy. So this policy basically deals with um, allergies, staff members with allergies and, and it defines allergy, anaphylactic allergies and, and how the municipality will um, basically, how they're going to take care of knowing who has allergies and, and keeping track of, of, of the people in the building who have allergies. Um, if you've had a chance to read the policy, do you have any questions on it? We're looking for a motion to pass the policy tonight. Councillor Surratt. I uh, so move that uh, we uh, approve the policy allergy accommodation policy. Do I, can I have a seconder? I'll, I'll second it. I'll second that. Okay, thank you, Councillor Woodrow. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion carried. Next, we have uh, 7B, fall grants to organization recipients. So earlier, probably it's been more than a week ago, um, we were sent a spreadsheet of organizations that were uh, making requests for our fall grants to organizations and we had a maximum amount of $7,000 that we could allot for these grants. So we all kind of gave our averages and this is the, th these are the totals that we came up with. If you notice at the bottom um, of, of the, the spreadsheet, the total is 6,850, so we're not quite at the $7,000 range, so we have two options. We can leave the numbers as is, or we can talk about this and we can add the remaining amount to top it up to $7,000. We could put the extra money to another organization. It's up to us. So what is the wish of Council? Councillor Surratt. Uh, certainly that 150, I think, uh, in my, I would think that it should going in a place where we, we were budgeted for it. And, you know, I, I have no particular uh, place to go, the Hoppers Point Community Centre, St. Anne's, there is over the horizon. You know, do, 
How about Hubber Spring Community Centre? Right. 150. I don't know if anybody's in favour or other ideas. I'm just throwing that out. Councillor Board. Thank you. Um, I agree with you. We, we should put it on there. Uh, I was just looking at Association de la Cadienne de la Région d'Argao. They asked for 500 and the average was 450, so why don't we just put 500 there? So that would take care of the, then we have 100 left and we can put it to wherever other organization. Um, we have Conseil de Acadien de Parabon. Uh, there is 900 there. We could put 1,000 there. That's just my opinion. Thank you. Board Thank you. news. Oh, well, I was uh, just going to say again, like to, to, to use the, the 150, uh, probably a good idea to go with the, uh, to bring them up to 500. Uh, the Association, Association des Acadiens de la Région d'Argonne, although nobody gets their full. So I think uh, I would go along with uh, the Hubbard's point. Um, they're quite a bit lower. They, they had a lot of, uh, a large amount that they were asking for. So I will go along with the, with the 150 going to uh, Hubbard's Point Community Center. Uh, Councillor Donaldson. To clarify, you meant 100 and 100 for them and, and 50? Or do you want the whole 100? No, I would go to, I, I would leave the 450, I think. Okay. Uh, uh, like I said, nobody nobody gets their full amount here. I know they only have asked for 500, but uh, I would I would leave it at 450, and use the 150 the 150 somewhere else. Okay. Is anybody willing to make a motion on what we do with this? I can make that motion. Okay. So your motion is to, to 150 uh, added on to the Hubbard's Point uh, Community Center. Okay. Can we have a seconder on that? I'll second that. Thank you. Any questions on that? So just. Just to clarify, you're moving. You're not moving the entire uh, thing right now. You're just voting on the transferring of 150, and then you can go into the discussion to, to, for everything else. Right. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary. Motion carried. So now that we've added the 150 onto the Hubbard's Point um, and Area Community Development Association, that brings our total to seven thousand dollars. Are we okay with the other amounts? Does that sit well with everybody? If so, is somebody willing to make a motion? I'd make the motion that we spend the $7,000 on the way that the uh, councillors have uh, sorted it out. Thank you. Second. I second that. Thank you, Councillor Sonia. Any questions on that? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have uh, 7C, Coastal Protection Act, proposed regulations and a municipality of district of Argyle's response. So you have two attachments on that one. The first one is basically the, the presentation, the presentation that was done um, that talks about the, the need for the coastal protection leg legislation, talks about the Coastal Protection Act, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Our job tonight, once now that we've read all that information, our job is to decide whether or not we're going to submit comments on this this proposed um, legislation or not. Um, we have the the um, information that was provided by CAO Muse. So uh, there are comments from staff. So there were staff members who attended this presentation. Board Muse being one of them. Alex has given some comments as well. And our job is to decide if we're going to submit comments on this or not, especially now that we know the information that the staff have given us. There's a few, a few um, areas of concern. One of them is um, enforcement. Who would be enforcing this? Uh, do we have the right professionals? Is this, gonna, is this gonna cause us to, is it gonna be difficult for do we have staff to do this? Are we going to have to hire staff to do this? So that's a concern, and it could be part of the comments we submit. And the availability of the person who would be able to um, enforce this. So having read that, any comments on that? How, how do we feel about that? Uh, Warden Muse. I'm just wondering about, okay, once we, are we going to have, uh, to to do some kind of an assessment every time we get a we get an application, because or will we know that that they are within that they are 
closer than, than, than uh, the regulations allow without having the actual uh, assessment done. Are we going to have to do an assessment every time we get an application? That's, that's my question. I'm not, I, I believe I can answer that. Um, I, I think that as part of a regular development uh, on a coastal property, the, the applicant and the developer has to provide information. Usually it's in terms of a, of a sketch, some sort of sketch as to where the person is intending to build. And uh, so that information would trigger whether or not that they would be in any way, shape, or form within the 100 meter mark. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if there was any chance of that happening, obviously our development officer would have to assure himself, uh, I say him because they're both male, um, himself that, that, that they were within that 100 meter or not. So the rules only apply in that 100 meter buffer zone. Um, so they would not have to engage a certified professional or designated professional until such time as we were sure that the development was within that zone. Yes, and, and this is different than what we were talking about before when we did our bylaws, where they would have to leave a buffer. This is totally different. This, mm -hmm. this is this is uh, so that they don't build close enough where Erosion. where the, the shores are ero are eros eroding. If I can say it, so so, it's it does it has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that we were we, we, we took that part out of our bylaws and we were going to reassess that. Where if you build if you build on the lake, that you may have to, to leave a buffer there, a buffer zone. This is this is all to do with if they if they're if they are further or or beyond that hundred. That hundred meters, or hundred feet, whatever, hundred hundred meters, I guess, from from the shore, then they wouldn't have. We wouldn't have to do an assessment of that property. So if they had a property that they have room to build outside that 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 zone, then they have the right to build without doing an assessment. Correct. Okay. The the rules that are being proposed would not apply. Would not apply there. Exactly. Thank you, Councillor Donaldson. That's over 300 feet. To me, that is completely ridiculous. We're eliminating all kinds of basically oceanfront building lots that would be people would be building probably high, high valued houses that would bring lots of taxation into our municipality. I mean, do people realize how far 300 and something feet are? I mean, most lots aren't even that deep. So to me, this is just a ridiculous, you know, I just, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Surratt? A uh, couple, of, couple of things. Uh, number one, it does not actually mean 100 meters from here to the building. If you're built on a lot that's on a kind of a hill, it could mean 30 meters, because I was reading that. So depending if it's the height was enough, it wouldn't be 100, it could be 30, it could be 20, it could be 50 depending on how your elevation goes from the lot. On a flat piece of land, yes, that, that 100 meter could, could be. By actually, that was a, just a comment, my concern, and Alain, maybe you can, you can if this is for you. Uh, so the existing developments are grandfathered. This is what I've kind of understood. But on, on the, uh, your explanation, there's something I just want to be sure I understand. It says, um, these regulations would not apply on existing development unless there were considerable improvements to them. So, so if you're grandfathered in, that doesn't necessarily mean you're grandfathered. If you made an addition of, on, on your building of 30 by 20, it could mean it would be opened up. Wow. Um, through you, um, uh, yes, I mean, if you have a, a dwelling or a home that isn't exempted by these rules and you decided to expand your home for instance let's say you're at the let's say you're at the 80 meter mark right now yes. on your home yes. and you want to build closer to the water line there's a possibility that you'd have to get an assessment before you are able to do that and I want to be clear it the the provincial government is not saying 
that you can't develop in this 100 meter zone, what it's saying is, is that you have, there has to be somebody that says that you can. Because, you know, in a lot of cases, like you, I, I picture Digby, I picture there's some really high cliff areas in Digby and in, in Yarmouth, maybe less, less so in Argyle, but in the municipality of Yarmouth, you see that. So, you know, you're not worried about erosion if you're, you know, a thousand feet in the air. Like, so there's certain things that, that they would take into account, but the, the province of Nova Scotia is saying, you gotta, you gotta get somebody else to say it's okay before it can be approved. That's what the regulation is saying in that 100 meter buffer. And again, that's primarily for new development. It may apply to old development and not all development has to abide by these rules. So commercial organizations yeah. that require to be right on the water, fish plants, et cetera, would be exempted from, from these rules. So it's, it's mostly around somebody that's you know, wanting to invest in a, in a property in Nova Scotia and you know, doing it like four meters away from the water line and then 15 years later he's, he or she is getting flooded. All right, so that's what, that's what they're trying to, uh, that's what they're trying to, uh, to address. Thank you. Any other comments? Councillor Sonia? I'm just concerned with government infrastructure and what comes to my mind is uh, Rockle Point Road and, and the Tittle. Uh, those are the two. So does the government fix that? Is, is that, or is that an Argyle issue? That's this, because that's being eroded as we speak. I mean, there's, there's a problem there now, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. That road, though, that's that's a uh, that's a provincial issue. That's provincial. Yes, that's a provincial issue, yeah. which we've had lots of conversations about. So I guess I guess my comment is they should they should come up to the challenge because mm -hmm. if they're going to put this policy, then these mm -hmm. roads need to be fixed. Yes. Uh, Anyone else? As long as nobody else wants okay. to. Okay, go ahead, Warden. Um, I, this is a government, this is going to be a government uh, uh, act that they're going, if they pass that, then we can't say we're not going to follow this, correct? Yes, it's provincial regulation. It's provincial regulation they're, that's going to, 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 to dictate to us that if they build within there, we have to do an assessment, they, you know, and if they build within that 100 feet, if they want to build within that 100 feet. Okay, so anyway, now, I just want to comment on, on, on Councillor Sonia's comment. This has nothing to do with the roads er er erosion right now, right? If, if, there could be a lot on, on Rocker Point or wherever that the road, the road is ero eroding there. But, but if you have a lot on that road that goes to the, to, to, to the water, it's, it's not how close you can come to the road, it's how close you can come to the water there, right? So where the road is eroding now, you wouldn't build there anyway, right? I mean, you're in a marsh or you're in something like that, right? So it, it really doesn't have anything to do with the road. It has to do with you have a building lot. If it's if if the if the road is eroding now because because of the water of the of the ocean or the, the the river, then you wouldn't be able to build there anyway, right? There's no there's. You're usually on a marsh if that happens. Right. The same is the same happens on Rocka Point and 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 the Tittle, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. I just, I just wanted to make sure that you understood that, that it is not the, eroding, the erosion of roads. It's, 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 it's the shore that, that's eroding, that if you're building close to the shore, then all of a sudden you're going to be, your lot is going to be start eroding. Any other comments? Okay, Councillor Donaldson. I just want to clarify it's 100 meters over 300 feet, not 100 yes. feet. Yes. And Again, I'll say the word ridiculous. Thank you. Councillor Surratt? If there's no other, oh, oh. if you don't mind, Glenn. Okay. Right. Uh, to, to, uh, to what the uh, warden said and, and Councillor Sonia, he has the road, totally right, the road. It's, it's where you're building. It's got whatever the road is eroding, it's where we're building. Mm -hmm. A camp, house, or whatever. But to Councillor Sonia's point, 
If the roads are, maybe that's not what you told him in, but if the roads are eroding and you can't get to your house, maybe it's time the government steps up. I think that's what I caught on. Thank you. Councillor Digden. Uh, thank you. I, um, yes, yeah, 333 feet, which is a long ways, really, I feel, as though anyway. Um, I don't know, there's going to be a lot of municipalities and towns that are going to be, a lot of the land that's going to be in the same uh, predicament as what our landowners may be in if want, they're wanting to build. So I don't know really, um, before I'd say that I'm for it or against it, I'd want to have more information and to see exactly uh, different pieces of land uh, erode at different rates. And that's so uh, I want to know what they're going to, what kind of uh, rules and regulations they're going to put in for th those pieces of land. Another thing that I'm looking at, and I mentioned it last night in an email, is the extra cost that it's going to put on the person that wants to build. And we don't know if it's going to cost $3,000 for an assessment or if it's going to cost $30,000 for an assessment. And that's something that I'd like to know as well before I go much further with this myself. Thank you. So having heard all that, it sounds like we want to make comments. And it sounds like we want to submit our concerns. So that is really what we have to do today to decide. It's not that we're, whether we're deciding to pass this or not. We're deciding tonight whether or not we're going to submit our comments and we're going to submit our concerns. So it sounds like we want to do that. And if we do want to do that, there is a suggested motion that says to move that comments and concerns be drafted by staff and delivered to the province prior to the September 30th deadline with the points raised by this request for decision. So if we're comfortable with that, which it sounds like that's really where we're headed, that's kind of in a roundabout way what we've said, is somebody willing to make that motion? Councillor Dontremont? I'll make that a motion. Thank you. Can I have a seconder? Councillor Digden? Thank you. I will second that motion. Okay. Do we have any questions on that? And, and if I may, mm -hmm. the only thing I maybe uh, is NSM getting involved in this, being that's going to be possibly be a, such a big issue across the province. Mm -hmm. Just wondering if it's something that the Nova Scotia municipalities would be interested in. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Surrett? Uh, could we, uh, if this motion passes, could we have a, the, the, the comments submitted by the staff before it's being sent so we could have a, have a look at what, what is being sent? Um, through, through you, we will provide the report to council before submitting for your second look if you wanted to add something. Thank you. If that's what you're going to ask. I have a question because there's two days here. So yeah. comments yeah. are going to have to be presented. Yeah. We, ha we have two days. So comments are going to have to be done very, very quickly. That's why I was going to ask where are these comments going to come from? But if they've already made comments from staff, then you probably have a few things that you could add to the comment uh, to the letter, right? We, I, I will draft the comments and we will make the deadline. Yes. So okay. you, will, you will see a copy of this probably tomorrow and, and you'll have a chance to comment before we submit it uh, on, on Thursday. Well, Thursday is a holiday, but, but, uh, but you know, we can still submit it on that day. Councillor Donaldson? Yes, I can probably understand some of the reasoning why the province is doing this. But in Argyle, we have very little of our coastal coastline that is exposed to the open ocean. Most of it's marshland, inland, like coves and inlets. And I don't see where we have any major erosion going on in Argyle compared to the eastern side of the province where you're, the full force of the, of the Atlantic is coming in on you. So I don't see where this pertains to us. So I would like you to, to put that in the comments somehow that it's, it's overkill for us is what I believe. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, we have a, oh, sorry, Councillor Sonia. I just have to readdress the road situation because I think if you, if you let your mind go free and think of all the roads that we have on this coast of Argyle here and all the erosion that we've seen in the past right here 
in Hillbrook on the causeway going to the church. That's been eroded in the past. Mm -hmm. And again, the two roads I mentioned before, and there's other roads that I've seen where the tidal uh, forces have eroded more than I see private house lots eroded. So I think it's an issue, and I'm just saying that if the government's gonna force this issue on us uh, to have to evaluate, then these roads are gonna to have to be evaluated as well. Thank I you. I see your connection. Anyone else? Go ahead. Uh, I just, just to give you some, some, some feedback, I received this today from the municipality of, of Barrington. It's written by Barrington, but it's on behalf of all of the, um, the members of Shelburne County. So they raised a lot of the same issues that were raised, uh, um, just very quickly, availability of designated professionals. Like if, like we've given you information as to how many properties, mm -hmm. uh, it could be between six and 12 properties that would require a designated professional in Argyle alone. So at a cost of probably closer to three and not uh, further away from 30, but, but we don't know, we don't know that and the availability of those professionals, who are they, where are they gonna come from? HRM might have a, an okay time finding mm -hmm. those professionals, but at, further away from the center you go, the less likely. Uh, added costs, which would be added to the developer. The developer would have to eat that cost as part of the cost of developing. More red tape, because it, it delays, it delays uh, yeah. our ability to, to provide a permit because we cannot do that without seeing the designated profession, uh, professionals uh, report. Um, there were uh, talk about mobile home, travel trailers, uh, how does the download work to us, and um, uh, records management, some, some smaller things, uh, beaches, subdivisions, um, and, and other exemptions and impacts on mortgages. So um, they, they did a really good job. It sounds like they, they gathered as a, as a team to, to provide very good in, 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 uh, input. We will do ours on our own, but um, you know certainly, um, a lot of the things that you've talked about today have been written in that letter as well, so you're not alone. And uh, we will put the note, if, to, if the rest of council is okay with it, we will raise the issue of you know, uh, the responsibility of roads uh, in, in this climate, as well as the, uh, uh, you know, making a point that erosion is a lower risk in, in Southwest Nova, and perhaps applying the same regulatory framework across the province I mean, they have, to, they have to find one rule to fit them all, I guess, uh, but we can make that point if you're okay with that. Absolutely, yep. Okay, any other questions? Go ahead, well, Councillor Donaldson. I'll call the question, uh, but i just like to a comment uh, before we vote. Has anybody ever noticed all the residential development on the Watt Halifax waterfront? Like, is that back 300 meters mm -hmm. or 100 meters? <clears throat> nope, you are correct. All right, question's been called. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Thank you. Next we have for 7D, selection and approval of quote to relocate the generator from 27 Courthouse Road to the treatment plant. So we've kind of already had this conversation through email because of it was a timely issue. We had two quotes and we had agreed that we would accept the um, price, the quote from Acadian Plumbing. So we just kind of need to confirm it by motion here tonight. Uh, Warden News. I will move that we accept uh, Keegan uh, Cummings' uh, quote. Do we have a seconder? I second. Um, all, any questions on that? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Thank you. Next we have the, for E, we have the RFD for the amendment of the active transportation plan. So we have an attachment of three pages on this one. So this one we have a lot of conversation. It's come up a lot of times about sidewalks and we've talked about coming up with a policy for sidewalks and what that would look like. And so staff has done some work around that and most of the policies that they've come up with have to do with maintenance of sidewalks. Whereas we were more looking for criteria. How do we set criteria for sidewalks in our municipality and prioritize where they would go? Um, it hasn't, we haven't found exactly what we're looking for, but this is suggesting that if we amend our active transportation strategy plan right now as it is, then we could possibly apply for some funding for sidewalks. So we know that in Argyle, we like to have other people pay for what we, what we get. So if we make an amendment to this plan, 
we would have some ability to possibly apply for funding for sidewalks if that is something down the road that we decide upon. So um, there is, where is it here? There is a breakdown of, of what it would pr uh, possibly cost to make the amendment to our plan. Um, sidewalks, federal government has recently made an announcement that there is funding available for active transportation strategies, and that could include an, the amendments to an existing strategy, so we do have a strategy right now. So we could engage WSP to lead the amendments for our plan in order for us to possibly seek funding for sidewalks later on down, later on down the road. So we're looking to think about can we make that, do we wanna make that amendment so that we could potentially apply for funding later on? What is the wish of council? Are you looking for a motion? Yes. I move that we make such a move. Do we have a seconder? I'll second it. Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, are there any questions on that, comments on that? Okay, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary? Motion carried. Next, we have F, Argyle Township Courthouse and Archives Provincial Guidelines. Two page attachment. So in this attachment, it talks about how October 4th, we're going to be going into the phase where we will need to provide our vaccine, um, what, I don't wanna use the word passport, but that's what we're using, the <laughs> vaccine passport in order to access certain um, certain program, certain, what's the word I'm looking for? Facilities, Facilities thank you, um, within our province. And for Argyle, if you look, it talks about the courthouse. The courthouse is considered a museum. Because it's a, considered a museum, you will have to show proof of vaccination in order to access the museum. It talks about recreation. We already, I think recreation is one we all, know about already, it's been talked about a lot in the media, um, but what we don't know about is the archives. There's nothing provincially legislated in terms of archives right now. So because our archives and our courthouse are very closely linked, um, it's recommended that we follow the provincial guidelines as we would for the museum, so we would be requiring proof of vaccination for people to enter the archives. So that is what we're proposing in this, um, in this memorandum. There is, also, uh, a motion, uh, if you've taken a look at the motion, which basically says that if we agree to do so, we would kind of lump our archives with our museum, with our courthouse, and have people have to show their proof of vaccination. Are there any comments or conversation or questions around that? Somebody willing to make that motion? Uh, I, will, yes? I will make the motion that uh, that, we, that the archives has to, uh, you have to have double vaccination in order to uh, enter the archives, same as the regulations for the uh, museum. Councillor Surratt? Oh, I'll second that. Okay, yeah. thank you. Are there any questions on that, comments on that? Go ahead. I think it's fair to say that some people are never gonna get uh, vaccination. So my question is, if they need access, if they need information, will they be able to get it without going in? Uh, so CAO Muse, I'm assuming that they, there would be a way around that. Yeah, I mean, that's, um, that's through you, uh, would be um, yes. I mean, the short answer, particularly on the archival side, is that if anybody wanted archival information, we could certainly arrange it for them to receive it without without them having to come in. Now, obviously, if it's a deep research required, that would be less than practical. Uh, what we don't know is, is how the phases will change and how things will loosen up over time. So, you know, we're, we're following the, the provincial guidelines because, well, quite frankly, we have to. And so, uh, and so uh, I think uh, at, this, at this point, we can, we can do that in certain practical instances. Um, but again, detailed uh, research would require them to be on site. Um, you know, perhaps the rules will, will change uh, in the future for that to occur. Um, perhaps there might be practical solutions that the archive staff might come up with in the rare instance where you might have that. Um, the, I guess the saving grace, uh, or I should say this clearly, we had a discussion 
at the staff level about international people coming in because a lot of the genealogical research is done by Americans coming into Canada. So um, they're actually at quite a low risk because they actually can't enter the country without showing proof of vaccination. So we're not, we're, we're not, the, we're not the problem, I guess. Uh, the immigration will not allow them in. So the good news is, is, that, that, is that the international market, if they can access the province, they can access that service as well because for that reason. Uh, courthouse tour is a little bit less uh, obvious, but uh, you know we have other issues around the courthouse uh, around accessibility. Um, and you know there's been talk of virtual tours as well because we can't have everyone go in that national historic site and we can't make major changes to it mm -hmm. to accommodate like an elevator, for instance. So there's, there's talk of like, how do we actually make it more inclusive? So it's, it, it could actually address some of this vaccination issue as well in the future. Thank you. Councillor Digden. Thank you. I'm just wondering if the staff that works for the archives, if they, is it mandatory for them to be vaccinated? Um, we will have a policy that comes to council at the next meeting that will address that specifically. So right now the draft policy says that uh, if you if you cannot uh, if you choose not or cannot provide proof of vaccination, you must wear a mask. Okay. So they could they can still access the facility, but they must provide other um, protective measures um, in absence of that information. But we'll certainly have a. Uh, more to say when the policy is in front of you for, for approval. Okay, because the only thing I've got a problem with, we're requiring them to be vaccinated, but yet the employees may not be vaccinated. And the employees may have a way to go there every day and work uh, without being vaccinated, like i.e. wearing masks or whatever, while the people that's coming up to do archival work may not be given that opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's all. Thank you. Any other comments? Go ahead. Just a question on, on that. Do establishments have the, 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 do they make the decision whether or not they will let people in without being vaccinated? You know what I mean? Like, like let's say, let's say if it's not an essential place, right? essential business or whatever it is, can that business say, no, but I'm gonna let people in? Or is that a, 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 a regulation that the government is saying you have to? Um, through you, I, my understanding, and trust me, these things can change quickly. So mm -hmm. I could say something and then tomorrow could be different. Mm -hmm. So take this with like a huge grain of salt. Um, my understanding is that this is a provincial directive under the Emergency Act. So we're still under, we're still in the pandemic. And so we're still under a state of emergency, which means when the province makes these directives, uh, they are to be followed. If, uh, if an organization refuses to follow it for whatever reason, uh, it could be subjected to fines and, and other forms of enforcement. I don't know what that looks like, uh, but, but it could, it, they could be subjected to it. Um, um, you know, it, it was just like the mask mandate. You know, you, you, you saw you know, certain organizations choose not to wear masks or choose not to follow and, and they were subsequently fined for that, for that decision. So, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, um, you know, th these guidelines ch change a lot and it would be some nice if the pandemic was to leave us alone and so that we could get back to some form of normal, but um, just because we're done with COVID doesn't mean COVID's done with us. And so that's, that's a bit of an issue and we're seeing in other provinces where it's, it's really, you know, variant in the fourth wave is really hitting them hard. Um, so yeah, I think, I think they can, but they'd be subject to, to fines to the best of my, no, to the best of my knowledge. Thank you. Any other comments? Go ahead, Councillor Surratt. Uh, page 16, Lofter Bay Shopper. I'm advertising for them. Uh, <laughs> it's got the whole list of, uh, of what is mandated by the government. And on halfway down, it says that these businesses, uh, can if they wish, but they don't need to. So on page 16 of Lofters Bay Shopper, let's say it was Tusk at Ultramar, and we're not subjected, but I could put the rolling as an Ultramar, as the Ultramar. 
that you can't come in unless you're vaccinated. So you, they've got that option October 4th. Right. That, thank, thank you for raising that. So that you can choose to, in, if you, yeah, you can choose to, to, to increase the, the rule, but you can't choose to be below the rule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. That's an, that, thank you for sharing that. That's, that's a piece I missed. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. Next, we have um, 7G, Bilingual Science Program for Congra 2024. Um, there's no attachment. I'm not sure who's speaking on that. Oh, perfect. All right. Go that ahead, is Councilor. mine. Um, so it was brought up to by uh, one of my people in my, uh, my district about uh, bilingual signs, and I know that we've talked briefly about it, but just to, to bring it back to the forefront, uh, 2024 will be here sooner than you think. Uh, and uh, so this person was, uh, you know, uh, telling me that uh, it would be great to have some really nice bilingual signs, uh, and, you know, thinking that uh, with is uh, Acadian Acadian Affairs in the province. Uh, the minister is uh, not too far away from here. Uh, plus, with you know our heritage and all those things, where that we could maybe uh, you know uh, get some money for for bilingual signs. I know that Claire has some kind of uh, of program there that they've started, and I'm not exactly uh, sure what the details are, but uh, it'd be great to find out. Anyway, uh, also, and I'm using Claire as an example because uh, it's an Acadian community and I've already seen the signs. They've got the blue signs that like, you know, if you're even on the 340, you see them for whatever lake and it's got uh, maybe the Acadian flag, uh, you know, we would, you know, we would do our own Argyle, you know, design if, if we were successful with, you know, finding funding. But anyway, this is just like, you know, startup ideals. Uh, and I'm just just wanted to present it to council. So, thank you, Board of News. Uh, if I may, the uh, the program that they were doing, study they were doing, Claire Claire basically has their bilingual signs, you know, their road signs, with like you were saying, Councillor Dantremont, with their logo or whatever on there, or flag. What they were doing and what what was brought to us to look at was the stop signs, right? Mm -hmm. this, is what, this, this, this is what the program was that they went. And my question is, we had decided that we would uh, go ahead with that. And uh, we were supposed to send a letter to uh, 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 the minister at that point and that there was funding available. So I don't know if we've heard anything about that or not, but there was funding for us to get the, uh, the uh, uh, stop signs changed to bilingual. I don't think that that included all the highway signs. Years ago, years ago, we went with bilingual signs. I don't know what's happening now, and I don't know how that was paid. Was that something that was paid, I wonder, by the municipalities to have those changed? Or was that a program through the uh, Nova Scotia government, transportation at the time, that, that, would, uh, that were doing that? But, a lot of the signs that are being replaced now are not going bilingual, apparently, is what I've been told. Like, signs are down. Well, there's a couple. I think there's a couple signs down that I'm, that I'm aware of. <laughs> and uh, from what I hear is when they're, when they're replacing, some of them are not replaced with the bilingual. But the bilingual that we had was, if it was... Uh, if it was an in, a suret sign would have said chemin suret road. That, that was our bilingual signs, right? Some, some names you just can't say, whether you have them in English or French. So I don't know. Chemin de la Pointe. Right. And so, so I don't know. I think that's how it's listed. Chemin de la Pointe. But it's not bilingual. Or it's Chemin de la Pointe road. It's, you know, which doesn't make sense. But anyway, going back, the, the, the program was to stop signs only. So if we were going to go with the uh, if we were going to go with the total bilingual signs, I think we would have to probably approach the uh, 
you know, maybe the Acadian fairs or, you know, to see what's, what's out there. But it's a good idea. I think we should before the conclave. That's. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Oh, thank you, uh, Councillor Boudreau. Thank you. Uh, just curious, uh, Calvin, uh, Councillor Darmo, um, what what are your plans? Is it just the stop signs, or just road signs, or just highway signs? Is it is it all of the above? Um, it's, it's really just an idea that's come up, and I think. Uh, uh, you know, if we were to engage in this, it would be probably having a, a subcommittee maybe with uh, community members uh, to kind of hash things out to find out, you know, really what we want. Uh, and, and then, of course, you know, an application and funding. Uh, it'd be great to be able to leverage, you know, uh, the programs that are out there, be it Acadian Affairs or Heritage Canada or whatever. Uh, but, you know, as far as, you know, I'm not going to say, I, you know, I want every sign, but... Yeah. Uh, or I say I, I mean, you know, the, the committee or whoever, uh, but I, I just bring it out there to start the ball rolling uh, because again, 2024 will be here before you know it, so. No, I was, no, I was just curious. Uh, thank you for your answer. Uh, thanks. Any other comments? How do we, yep, go ahead. I can provide an update on okay. the stop sign. So the stop sign, uh, that is underway. They've received a letter, they've accepted, they've acknowledged the letter, they're gonna do a tour of the community with the new government and uh, the stop signs will be installed, stop ara, with no, um, no cost to us. Right. So um, on the issue of bilingual signs, um, I, I, I just would want clarity, like are we talking about asking the Department of Transportation to make sure that the signs are bilingual, like Schmet Sudets Road or Schmet La Pointe Road, and to put them up before that, that cut? Or are we also talking about community signs? Because the Claire signs with the blue mm -hmm. are actually like for Doucetteville. Like, so yeah. those are community signs. Yeah. So those are unlikely to be funded by the Department of Transportation. Those would be, those would be seen as, as more like what you, what you see in your communities where they've kind of gone on their own to do the, that sign, that signage program. So it would be to clarify for us, for staff to execute, we want to know exactly what you'd like to see around that. Um, um, so I just, I would just want a little bit of clarity before, before we could build a, a, a plan around it. That's all. Councillor Dr. Well, again, being that it's, you know, it would be for Congra. Uh, it would, you know, to me anyway, it would, wouldn't just be, you know, uh, road signs or it would be community signs that are dressed up, uh, showing our pride and, and show, you know, so I, I, that's what uh, I would be looking for. Uh, but again, uh, it would probably take a committee and, you know, people making decisions on that. But for, for me, that's, that's what I'm looking at. So. Councillor Surrey. In uh, 2008, the first year I was on council, what you're talking about, I brought up to this council if we couldn't get the same side as Claire, and nobody voted for it. I want to make a motion, I made the motion, and it wasn't seconded, so it fell off the floor. I'm glad to hear that finally, 13 years later, somebody brings it up again. I certainly am in totally in favor of what you're saying. I think it brings bright, pride to our community. Uh, uh, I remember Alain stating, our CAO, stating it was a cost at that time, which it still is to the municipality because it was community signed, as you mentioned. And uh, yes, I certainly would be interested I, on the committee. I certainly would support that, that, that motion if you want to do it. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Sonny. Thank you. Uh, my only concern, I guess, to, to your point, uh, Councillor Surratt, it was defeated probably because of cost. And what I would like to see, as much as I think it's a great idea, I'd like to see if we could get an estimate on the cost before we come to a decision with this. Thank you. So are we looking to, I guess, I'm wondering next steps. Is it is it to come up with a, a subcommittee? Is that kind of our next step, Councillor Dontremont? Um, I, I guess to get the ball rolling and to, uh, I guess, to, to engage our CAO and staff to look into this. I'll make a motion 
Uh, I'm just trying to think how to word it, but I guess I'll make a motion that we look into bilingual signs uh, for, uh, for our communities, for the municipality, and um, I guess we can throw in, I don't know if I'm gonna throw in for the Congra or just signs, I guess, uh, but I'll, I'll throw in for the, to have them before Congra uh, 2024. Do we have a seconder? I'll second that. Okay, seconded by Councillor Surrett. Any other questions or comments on that motion? Okay. Or is, okay. <laughs> That's okay. Oh. Yes. This is just, um, so this would be over and above the community signs that some of the communities have put in their own areas. So, so I'll interpret that to mean that even if there is a sign in Cuscot, that the request would include communities that are typically known to be bilingual, regardless of whether they have an existing sign or not. Is that an appropriate interpretation? I mean, I can get the cost per sign. You can decide how many signs you want, but, yeah. but at, at some point, I think council, once they get that information, they'll wanna know which communities yeah. would want that kind of signage and not every community is bilingual. So there, there, there might be a, kind of an, a, a deeper look into how we would address that because we wouldn't want to exclude. So we could, you know, certainly um, investigate that at the next, uh, once we get that. But I guess I just want to clarify, like, is it, is it like, so it matters not what the signage is now, we should be looking at the Acadian communities as part of the estimate in cost. Is that, is that mm -hmm. accurate? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I would say, go ahead, Councillor Josh. Yeah, well, I think it's an evolving thing here where I just, you know, you know, this is just a startup conversation, okay. so. But I, I, you know, I do appreciate your question, uh, CA Mules. So, well, cost cost per sign would cost probably sign be is right is where we would begin, and then we talk about it. We'd okay. Move forward from there, I would think. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary. Motion carried. Thank you. Next, we have. Shift House, Councillor Digden. Uh, thank you. Um, gonna keep it quite short on this. On the uh, 18th of September, I had the privilege of attending the 10 year anniversary of the Shift House in Yarmouth. Um, people may ask, what is Shift House? Shift House is a safe house for adults between 18 and 24 years of age. If they can go there, spend some time, uh, receive some help uh, doing up um, job resumes and stuff like that. And uh, it was very, very well attended. It was a very nice afternoon. The organizers done a great job of putting on a nice afternoon for the people present. And the only thing I'd like, uh, I did not have a certificate of appreciation from the municipality of Argyle, although we were mentioned as a contributor and a great supporter of theirs. And I was just wondering um, if I, I'm not wondering, I'd like to make a motion that the municipality of Argyle send a um, certificate of appreciation to them and that it could be delivered uh, by either our warden or deputy warden. Sounds good. Do we have a seconder to that I, motion? I can second that. Okay. And uh, I thank you for being able to go on that day, uh, Councillor Digden. I was unable, unable to go. I had, I had three activities to, to to choose from and I had to, I couldn't go to all three. So I really appreciate you being able to, to be there to represent the municipality on my behalf. I was honored to be able to attend. Thank you. Thank you, I, I was not feeling well. So yeah, no, I appreciated you going that's to. A, thank you. Okay. So are there any questions on that? Okay, motion on the floor. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion carried. Next we have letter of support, Councillor Digden. Uh, thank you. Um, this year, as some of you people may have heard, um, the town of Yarmouth is looking to have access routes available for four-wheelers that maybe want to go into town. Uh, of course, this would come with rules and regulations by all means, but I know it's been always a sore point of a lot of people that can get as far as town and that are the town limits, and then they're not allowed to go in town, where uh, a lot of people go on wheeling trips and would love to go in there. 
and um, possibly go to a restaurant or whatever the case may be, or just join on to the other route that takes them down towards Metagan, and whereas they can't do that right now. So I see where the town of Yarmouth is looking. They're going to make an application to the province and that, that wheelers be allowed in true town, of course, with rules and regulations that would be set forth either by the province or by the town or by both of them in conjunction. Um, so I'd like to see a letter of support come from the municipality of Argyle towards that project that the town is working on. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a seconder on that motion. I'll second the motion. Good, thank you. Any questions, comments on that? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion carried, thank you. We will now move down to number eight, correspondence and for information. So 8A, we have Western Wren quarterly reports. There are two attachments there for your viewing um, pleasure on their quarterly reports. 8B, we have the Western Counties Regional Library Board, June 17th, 2021 board minutes. 8C, there is um, an attachment about a pop-up COVID-19 vaccination clinic in the municipality of Argyle. There are actually two. If you look, West Pubnico will have one Tuesday, October 5th. Where did it say it would be? I saw that somewhere. At the Legion. Thank you, Councillor Digden. And there will be one in Tuscot as well. And that one is at the PVS, PVSC building in Tuscot from 10, 10 a.m. until 2 um, in early October. I don't think those dates are, are confirmed yet. So that is for your information. Also 8D, Municipality of the District of Argyle Building Permit Statistics. There is an attachment there for you. I expected something from Councillor Surratt, but no. <laughs> no, okay, okay. <laughs> then we will move on to number nine, financial requests, there are none. Oh, sorry, Councillor Digden. That's all right, that. by all means. I'd just like to thank our CAO and his staff. That was one of the things that I always enjoyed. Looking through was the monthly building permits and see what's going on around the, the area and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And he said he'd provide it and sure enough, he came there true. It was. Thank you. Councillor Dontrum. And also, uh, I guess while we're talking about in correspondence, the, the pop-up COVID-19 clinic, uh, could we have that uh, on our Facebook page so we can share it? Please. Yes, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, sounds good. No financial requests. Oh, Councillor Dignan. <laughs> that's all right. I have right. to look up. I'm used to looking at a screen all the time for Zoom. That, that's okay. <laughs> I, I was just wondering if those permits, I know when we used to get the monthly building permits and that, they used to come in what areas, like uh, that the work was yeah, being so done? What district? And in what district exactly? And I was just wondering if that's something we could go back to or j just wondering. Um, through you, absolutely. So what we'll do is, um, so first of all, the September, September isn't over yet, so we're comparing probably the full September to to the September to date uh, in, the, in the information that's provided there, so that's one. Uh, we can get you absolutely the detail um, um, and we'll go back to April 1. We'll go back to the beginning of the fiscal. Mm -hmm. So we'll do April, May, June, July, August, and then we'll, we'll moving forward, we'll do September in that detail as well. So we'll get that. So what we typically do is, uh, I wanna just double check to make sure that some like proprietary information isn't shared. Like, so if, so if there, it, it, so, so just, I think we can, I think we did it before, so I'm pretty sure we can do it again. Um, just a transition of, of staff in that position. Um, so we'll just make sure that we get you exactly what you're looking for. Yep. Um, the, the, I think uh, just to, as another just sidebar, I think John Sullivan would say that the permits are down, but the but the value of permits are up. So so the permits are are like the you know so there's there's less they're they're tapering, but they're bigger jobs. So if that's his mm -hmm. has been his recent observation. Yeah, we'll get that for you. Thank you. Okay, moving on, no financial request. Number 10, agenda topics for next meeting. Notice of motion by councillors. Are there any agenda topics any councillors would like to add to our next meeting? Notice of motions. Okay, seeing none. 
11, question period. Okay, we're good. And number 12, in camera. So we will need a motion to go in. Is, is, yeah, we so will moved. need. So moved. Thank you. Motion, uh, seconder. Thank you, Councillor Digden. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Motion carried. So we will now go in camera.